Well, when it comes to Disney Imagineering and Disney architecture choices, especially in the past five to 10 years, there's been a lot of people, including myself, that have pointed to the fact that they look uninspiring, they don't look creative, and it's nothing like Disney used to do when it comes to even designing simple buildings that are meant to sell merchandise, and that's before you even get into major areas of theme parks like over in Epcot with Communicore Hall, as that was initially going to be a very futuristic looking building that was going to serve multi-purpose things and have firework viewing up top with a garden and all sorts of things. And what we ended up with was a very square building, which looked like a community college dining hall. No offense to dining halls out there, but you know, they're not usually in theme parks touted as experiences that you can check out. And it seems over in Disneyland, there's yet another example of this as the new Haunted Mansion gift shop has been revealed, and it's basically being panned across the board by most people out there. So we have an article here by That Park Place, and we're gonna read through this and get some thoughts on it. And I think I know exactly who designed this, and it's who we've talked about before, and uh, we will also talk about that. So, hi, I'm Jared with Capture the Magic. And again, this is That Park Place, says the Disneyland Haunted Mansion gift shop is ridiculed by guests after disastrous reveal. It says, when construction walls came down around the new Disneyland Haunted Mansion gift shop, fans were astounded that one of the best themed attractions in the history of theme parks will have its merchandise sold from a plain, ordinary green carriage house with absolutely no external theming. And this is what it looks like. I've seen some sheds in backyards have perhaps some better theming than this. Uh, it's a pretty simple building. You know, and I think uninspired comes to mind when you look at this, nothing screams haunted mansion i mean if you're just looking at this it, it doesn't seem haunted mansion to me this just seems like a it almost looks more like a tiana's bayou adventure building if i'm being quite honest about how it looks here but we're going to read further on and see some of the reactions that people have about this uh the new merchandise location sits near tiana's bayou adventure it's supposedly themed after madame leota the resident psychic and ghost conjurer of the Haunted Mansion. The building is an unassuming bland structure that showcases no external character. Truly a baffling decision by Disney Imagineering for a location connected to such an iconic and instantly recognizable Disney IP. Which, you know, it's one of those things. We've often talked about how Disney used to do things with their Imagineering. And so, you, you know, you look at Haunted Mansion, the you know, that one out there in Disneyland, and then the building next to it. And those things are just not going to look like they're even remotely from the same group of people because they're not. Uh, retired Imagineer Jim Shule echoed these sentiments on X when he voiced his disappointment at the new Disneyland Haunted Mansion gift shop. He said, reminds me of Dorothy's house in The Wizard of Oz, dropped from the sky to land where it did, unconnected to anything surrounding it. Yeah. Uh, Shoal wasn't the only one disappointed. Disney fans on X, it's like it used to be Twitter, ridiculed the new merchandise location for its lack of resembling theming. It's just terrible, X user Seek Jabote said in a post responding to Shoal. It's just slightly better than a prefab you might find winding its way along the road in remote areas on the back of a truck. In fact, it is reminiscent of a garage or garden shed. It's definitely out of place, completely messes with scale. I just don't understand how this got even approved. Yeah, I mean, and you look at, this is the one in Disney World, and obviously they're very sim similar in terms of kind of how they're looking, but like, and there's been some people that have said Memento Mori in Disney World isn't even as good, you know, even that themed compared to Haunted Mansion, but it does look like it has more character. It looks a bit more Haunted Mansion-like, but when you compare it just to this one here, I mean, this just looks like a shed. I mean, that is really the best description of it. I mean, this looks like, kind of an older building, but maybe, you know, you can obviously see it's kind of made to look older than it really is. But this just looks like they bought a prefab shed at Lowe's, put some paint on it, a couple of accents, and that was it. And sadly, I'm sure it costs way more than a shed from Lowe's did, but that's kind of the, the way it looks to me. Ex-user Kevin Wass, the punchline summed it up nicely, saying that the new location was Memento Mori, but worse. And that's, yeah, what we just saw right there. Memento Mori, Walt Disney World's Haunted Mansion gift shop, sits near the Haunted Mansion attraction at Liberty Square. However, Memento Mori is a unique shade of blue that makes it stand out from the rest of Liberty Square. It also features a themed sign with a large eye, helping it blend in with the mansion's spooky aesthetic. While it's possible Disney will add more theming closer to the store's opening, at the very moment, the only theming present at the Disneyland Haunted Mansion gift shop is on the single remaining construction wall, which features concept art of the shop and a note from Madame Leota. It says, soon I shall be returning once more, the note reads, with haunting treasures and wonders galore. It's almost appropriate that the new gift shop sits besides Tiana Bayou Adventure. 
the new Disneyland attraction just had a disastrous opening day with, that saw the log flume replacement for Splash Mountain down seven hours throughout the day, which we had a video talking about this uh, a couple days ago. You can check that one out if you want to see about that, but it's not off to the best start as neither was or still is Disney World. And yeah, so obviously this isn't open yet. They could add more things to this. So I guess we should note that in saying there could be more things added to it. But um, I just think it's the perfect thing that just shows you Imagineering today. And again, I think who is behind this, which I've talked about before, is Gensler. And Gensler is the largest architecture company or firm, whatever you want to call it, in the world. And there is a direct pipeline between Disney Imagineering and Gensler. If you look at some of the people who ran Imagineering, and I cannot remember her name, but she was recently you know, let go or stepped down. She came straight from Gensler, and you see people come from Disney and back and forth between there. And if you've ever wondered why many buildings in the world look uh, uninspiring, soulless, and bland, it's Gensler. And I think this is where Disney is getting a lot of their, you know, at least inspiration or ideas from. And this strikes me as something that Gensler designed, and I'm not going to be surprised if they are the ones behind it. Now, even if Gensler designed something like this, this doesn't mean that Disney has to approve it as they could sit there and say, hey, we want more of this, we want more of that, or whatever else they want on it. But again, I think this comes down to cost. I think this comes down to lack of imagination, either forced down on Imagineers or just the Imagineering crew is not what it used to be, which I think it is probably a little bit of both, as many longtime Imagineers, which were responsible for many you know, successful attractions and different things inside the theme parks were let go during COVID or basically retired or asked to leave because they were making a lot of money. And I think now what you're left with is a group of people that don't have the same level of skill as those Imagineers did. Couple that with whatever they're demanding out of, you know, the corporate side of things, which is probably saving money. And they probably just don't feel like they have to do much with this because probably on some level, they're probably right in that they put this building up. People can criticize it, but more than likely, they're still going to sell merchandise out of it and people are still going to go in here and buy stuff. And at the end of the day, they're probably thinking we saved money and what difference does it make? But again, I just point to these are the little things that Disney used to do really well. I think back in the day, if they were designing bathrooms, they would go way out of their way. And look at the tangled bathrooms in Disney World. I think it's a, a crime that Tangled is just a bathroom rest stop basically in the parks. I think there should be more Tangled things in the parks, especially in Fantasyland. But those bathrooms are the best designed bathrooms you've ever seen in terms of theming and all these things like that that are from the Tangled movie with the lanterns and everything and all the stuff around it. They used to go out of their way even on small things, but just going to the bathroom and theming those. But you're also seeing this happen not only with gift shops, but I also think you're seeing this with attractions. You look at Tiana's Bayou Adventure, there does there are people that like it better than Splash Mountain, but both coast version of it have been criticized in terms of the way it looks, a lot of the empty spaces with it, uh, the storyline to it. There's just a lot of things that seem uninspired or that just go, by, you know, cookie cutter, just the bare minimum that they could do. And I think this is a perfect example of that. And if you just want to see what this is compared to, say, what, Universal is doing with Epic Universe. You can take a look at some construction photos here. And this is Darkmoor Village in the Dark Universe. And these are just gift shops here. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure this right here is a gift shop. You can see the level of detail in these buildings that are serving nothing more than gift shops and to be a village in this land. And the level of detail that is on here on the roofs, on the buildings, and these aren't even done yet. And then you just take a look at this. I think it's kind of evident that the, you know, at least where the inspiration, the ideas, the creativity currently lies, as there are a lot of ex Imagineers that are working for Universal Creative now. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where when you talk about the issues that, you know, many times we'll talk about what I think Disney is doing is very short sighted. I think this definitely falls into that category as they just don't feel like the details matter like they used to. And they can they can give lip service to all the things they want to say that they're doing things. That, what would Walt do and things like that? But I think in their actions, they're, you know, they're showing otherwise. And unfortunately, we're seeing it in some of the latest offerings that they've been doing when it comes to say Epcot or this. Now, to give it credit, they could theme this a bit more, but either way, it still is not some sort of building that looks like a haunted mansion type of building. It's still gonna look very much like a shed, even if they put you know extra accents and things on this. And it's not the creativity that, again, I think Disney used to do. And I've said this many times that Disney created the standard in which theme park theming is to be judged. And of recent history, they're falling short of their own standard. And in my opinion, I think Universal is picking up that mantle and going with it. 
And they're, you know, if you look at it from a sports analogy, Disney is the, you know, the the team that's been winning a lot. They get it's easy to get comfortable. Oh, why do we have to do this? Because what's it gonna matter? It's gonna cost us an extra, you know, five hundred thousand dollars to do X, Y, and Z. We can do the bare minimum. People are still gonna buy stuff. What's it matter? And your competitor or the young and up and t- up and coming team is doing the little things. They're trying to make their way, make more market share come their way. They're trying to win customers over and they're being more creative, paying attention to the details a lot more. And I think this is something as time goes on, you're just going to see the difference be even more glaring. And hopefully Disney's looking at this and making changes now. And I've been, I've said it before, Disney is, is a giant company. If they want to turn things around, it's like a cruise ship turning around. It doesn't happen quickly. It takes a lot of time, effort, and want to, to turn a ship around. So Perhaps they could be seeing these things and deciding internally we need to change things around. But until we, you know, again, they can give all the lip service they like, but until you start seeing these things and the new offerings that they have, it's just one of those things. It's it's just going to be lip service. And I think that as, you know, this continues and as time goes on, you're just going to see this, this gap in terms of creativity and level of detail that Disney used to own the market on. And slowly you could see a scenario where Universal starts becoming much more known for this as they seem to be going all in on it with Epic Universe. You know, we just looked at a picture of one building in Dark Universe. There's numerous buildings all over Epic Universe that's currently being built that shows that level of detail for just buildings of of like show buildings or gift shops or just simple buildings that are just doing nothing but creating ambiance in that area. And I, I think this is something that I enjoy seeing from a theme park and I'm very excited to check out. But, you know, you take a look at this and yeah, it's a gift shop and I'm not trying to sit here and act like it's the end of the world. But again, it's just another example of the current Imagineering in terms of what do they offer. And it seems like at the very minimum, it's just sort of the bare minimum. But either way, that's going to be it though for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel as we do lots of coverage here of Universal Studios, Epic Universe, Disney World, and pop culture. And let us know in the comments, what do you think about the new Haunted Mansion gift shop out in Disneyland? And until next time, we will see you in the parks.